Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna explain how you can create logic gates in Patcher. So here on the surface, I have two buttons and the output will depend on the configuration of these buttons. So is one of them pressed or both of them pressed? On the map side, I've made pretty much all the different types of gates in existence and you can use this by connecting these lines into the gate that you want to use so just connect A to A and B to B. So these first gates only have one input so I'm going to connect A in there and this first gate is what is called a buffer and it essentially just feeds the same thing out that came in. <laughs> so whatever I'm doing with this A button, it's gonna be the output. So if I press A, the output will go to one because this button is pressed, which means that the value of it is one or 100%. And if I press it off, this will go to zero, which is obviously 0%. And this is like not very useful in, in any kind of practical application, but I just thought to explain it because for some people, the formula controller might be kind of mystified. Like you don't really understand what these like parameters are. What is A? What is B? What is C? But it's like if you feed something in to the A parameter, so you have activated this parameter and then you type in a, then it means that whatever comes out of the formula controller from here will be the exact same value as A. So yeah, I just thought that might be worth explaining <laughs> in the beginning here. So the next gate is the not gate. And this is essentially like the inverse. So whatever comes in, the output will be the inverse of that. So now if I press A, the output will be zero. Then if I press like toggle A off, the output will be one. So it's the inverse. So now when A is 0%, the output of this gate will be 100%. So now let's go to the first gate that has two inputs. So I'm going to connect A to A and B to B. The AND gate will output one only if both A and B are one. Otherwise, it'll always output zero. And here, if I press A, you can see that nothing happens. If I put A off and turn B on, nothing happens. But if I turn A on, it'll jump to one. So this will output one only if both of these buttons are toggled on. So the next gate is the NAND gate. I don't really know how to pronounce these. Like, is it just NAND or N AND? I don't know. Not AND will output zero only if both A and B are one. Otherwise, always outputs one. So it's kind of like the opposite of AND. So right now, neither of these buttons are on and we can see that the output is one. So it's kind of hard to see at first, but this gray little line is at the top here. Now, if I press A, it'll still be one. If I press B, still one. But now if I press A and B together so that they're both on, this will output zero. Next one is the OR gate. The OR gate will output one if only A is one or if only B is one or if both of them are one. But if both are zero, it'll output zero. So now if I press A, it'll output one. If I press B, it'll output one. If I press A and B together, it'll also output one. But if both of them are off, this will also output off. So zero. For somebody who's not familiar with binary values or true and false values, it might sound confusing when I talk about on and off and one and zero and zero percent and a hundred percent. So it's just like off is always zero and on is one. And one is also the same as 100% when we're talking about knob values. 
So next up is the NOR gate. So the NOR gate will output one only if both A and B are zero. Otherwise, output's zero. If I press A, the output is zero. If I don't have either of them pressed, you can see that the output is one. If I have both pressed, the output is zero. So this will only output one if both A and B are zero. Then we have the XOR gate. And here it'll output one only and only if A is one or B is one. So the difference is that with the OR gate, it'll also output one if both A and B are one. But the XOR is like, it's, it, it has to be either A or either B, and otherwise it'll always output zero. So let's try that. If we have A on, it'll output one. And now if I press B, it'll go back to zero. So with the OR gate, this would still be one. And the last gate is the XNOR gate. So this will output one only if A and B are the same. So either both are one or both are zero. Now we have both of these, like both of these are one, this will output one. But now if we have only A selected, and if we have both of them off, it'll also output one. If we turn one of them on, it'll go to zero. So let's go over these formulas. The buffer one was pretty self-explanatory, but what about the not gate? So why is one minus A always the inverse of A? I'm just gonna connect this back into the not gate. Right now, the result of this formula is one minus zero. So it's one, so the output will be one. Like the output is always whatever this formula equals to. But now when we press A, what is this now? It's one minus one, which will be zero. So in the AND gate, we have A times B. So why does that result in this behavior? If neither are pressed, this will just be zero times zero, which is obviously zero. <laughs> if A is pressed, it will also be zero because anything times zero is zero. So only when both of them are pressed, this can be one because one times one is. And the NAND gate, not AND, I, I still don't know what to call that. And here we have this bracket statement. So we have the, something that is essentially same as the AND, A times B, and now we just put it in brackets and then put one minus at the front. So in here, we kind of combine the NOT and the AND gate, <laughs> like the name suggests. <laughs> in the NOT statement, one minus A is always the inverse of A. So in the NOT AND, we just make it like the inverse of AND by putting the minus one at the front. So next up is the OR gate. And in here, we have a plus B. So if we have none of these enabled, it'll just be zero plus zero, which is zero. If we enable one of them, it'll be one plus zero, which is obviously one. If we have B enabled, it'll also be zero plus one. But if both are enabled, this will technically be two because surprise, surprise, one plus one is two. But the formula controller works in a way that it'll only output values that are between zero or one. So you can't output two from the formula controller. It doesn't exist. So in this case, it's just like this is technically two, but it'll just kind of like slice it off from the ceiling. So it's like here is one, here is two, but it's just like, it just cuts it off, but it doesn't matter. It works as expected in this scenario because it'll still output one when both of these are pressed. So next up is the NOR gate. 
So in here we have the first statement where I'm using the equal sign. Let's go over the behavior again. So it'll output one only if both A and B are zero. Otherwise, it'll output zero. So if I press A, it'll jump to zero because now this is saying one plus zero is equal to zero, which is not true. So this will return zero. And we can test this. If I take this off, this will just become an OR gate. So now if A is pressed, it'll return one. If B is pressed, it'll return one. And if both are pressed, it'll also return one. But when we add this kind of like a conditional part in it, it becomes like a true or false statement. Let's go to the XOR gate. Here we have another conditional statement, A plus B equals one. So the XOR outputs one only and only if A is one or B is one. So we can go over this again. So if both of these are zero, this will obviously result in a false statement because zero plus zero is zero, not one. But if I select A, this will be one plus zero. The output is one because it's true. Vice versa with the B, it'll also be true. But if I select A as well, it'll be one plus one, which is two. So this will not be true. So you can like you can use numbers that are not between zero or one in the formula section, but the output can only be something in between zero or one. And finally, the XNOR. And in this one, we just kind of compare like, is A equal to B? So it'll result in this behavior that only if A and B are the same, so if they're both one or both zero, it'll output one. So if A is pressed, it'll be zero because A is not the same as B. Okay, we got through it. These gates would be a lot more interesting in Patcher if feedback was allowed so I could build a simple memory using NOR gates, like a flip-flop where you could save values if you could feed things back. So connect something from the output back into the inputs. But so far that's not possible in Patcher, but let's hope that in a future update we'll be able to do that. So yeah, I think that's about it for this tutorial. I will put a link to this patch in the description so that you can download it for yourself. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. I make a lot of music production related content and like this video, leave a comment and yeah, I will see you in the next video.